Standby is the biggest iOS 17 feature that turns your iPhone into an awesome smart display or information board when it's otherwise just sitting idly on your desk or on a kitchen counter. And I'm gonna show you all about how to use it. So last year when my wife got an iPhone 14 Pro Max, I showed her the always on display that keeps your lock screen visible even when you're not using the phone. And she said, neat, why would I want that? And inevitably she turned it off after the first full day of thinking she had a notification every time she glanced at her phone. Well, standby is what the always on display was made for. When you're working at your computer, it can be an extra information board. When you're playing music in the kitchen, you have these big playback controls. When it's sitting on your nightstand, it can be a big full screen clock. There's so much you can do with it. And I'm gonna show you all of it. So in order for standby to work, your phone needs to be horizontal, it needs to be charging, and it needs to be held steady. You can see that as soon as I turn it vertical here, it turns off. As soon as I turn it horizontal again, it'll come back on. Now, that means that MagSafe stands are the best way to use standby because it'll do all three of those things at once. This right here is the Cooks U X40. I wrote a review of it that you can find in the video description or if you click right there at that link. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you need a MagSafe stand to use it. You could also use a basic stand like this one from SwitchEasy, so long as you have a lightning cable plugging it in. But MagSafe stands obviously work the best, which is why standby is only enabled on the iPhone 12 and newer. So once standby is running, you have three different views that you can switch between. This one is a full screen clock. This one is a photos viewer. And this one is two widgets side by side, the same kind that you can put on your home screen. Now standby mode can only be customized while standby is active. There's nowhere else in settings that you can edit this. And that leads to some problems. As I mentioned earlier, standby only works horizontally, whereas on the iPhone 12, as I have right here, face ID only works vertically. So, you know, you try to use face ID, it doesn't work, you turn it, hor you turn it vertical again, and then suddenly standby is gone. That's why it gives you this passcode screen so that you can easily type it in and unlock your phone. But of course, if you have a more complicated alphanumeric password as I typically do, that can be kind of a pain. And of course, you need to enter your passcode in order to view the pictures or to edit any of these widgets or customize any of these. Let's start with the dual widget view. This is maybe one of the most practical. You have two home screen widgets side by side and just like on the home screen, you can flick through a stack of them. You can have news and weather side by side, music and podcasts, maybe for playing audio when your phone is sitting on a kitchen counter. This right here is supposed to be a sleep widget, but as you can see, my phone is locked. Another limitation of having an iPhone 12 here. It's not actually going to show you the data. This is the battery widget. It shows you the current charge of all your devices. And in order to edit these, you just tap and hold on the screen. And again, just like on the home screen, you can remove these. And you tap on that button to add a new widget to the stack, like screen time, stocks, TV, wallet, weather. You have all of these options. And after iOS 17 launches, you'll be able to add in more widgets from third-party apps. Now, unfortunately, you're limited to two of the small widgets. You can't have one really big widget. And there are a few obvious ones missing here, like the shortcuts widget. You know, imagine how awesome it could be if you could have an iPad mini sitting vertically full of a bunch of little shortcut buttons that you could tap sort of like a stream deck. Next is the photos screen. It's sort of like the photos lock screen. You tap and hold and you can switch between a variety of different categories, featured, nature, pets, and cities. You can tap this eye in the corner if you don't want to see that category. It'll intelligently choose what it thinks are the best pictures out of your photo library. And this is one that really sings if you have an iPhone with an always on display because it turns your phone into a digital picture frame and you don't have to worry about copying photos on or off of it because being an iPhone, it has access to your entire photo library, including your shared photo library if you have that set up. And of course you have the clock view. This is just one big clock that fills the entire screen. This is really handy if you put your phone on a nightstand by your bed, because in the middle of the night, if you wake up at some unholy hour, you can see what time it is and how long you have until your alarm goes off. In all honesty, I like this one over the dual widget view because it has all of the same information I would want in there anyways, and it just looks a lot nicer. This is a sort of mid-century full screen analog clock. You can change the primary color. Right now I have it set to blue. You have the world view, 
which shows you your current location, which I'm going to have to blur out in post. You have your alarm in the upper corner there. These orange dots are the various time zones that you have set in the clock app. You have the current position of the sun on this really cool sort of dotty map of the world. It really kind of looks like a TV news station set in that sort of way. Next you have solar, this giant digital clock that shows you this sort of a gradient. You have a number of preset color styles you can set it to. And I'll be honest, none of these really scream solar to me, but you can pick one of these styles if you like it. I think most of them are kind of ugly. This isn't really my favorite. And you have float, which shows the time in these gigantic bubbly letters alongside the alarm. You have some pretty wacky options here. Orange and blue, purple and pink. My wife took one look at this and recoiled in horror before I promptly switched back to the widescreen analog clock. Last but not least, you also have this digital clock. With your alarm, the date, and the temperature in the corner, this is what most people are probably going to use. Another great feature of standby are full screen live activities. If you have music playing, a timer running, a DoorDash delivery on the way, or some other sort of live activity, you'll see this little icon on the top of the screen. You tap it and the live activity will take over the whole screen. So if you have music playing, you have these giant playback controls. And to get back, just like inside any other app, you just swipe up. Here's another great standby feature. When your alarm goes off in the morning, have you ever confused the snooze button for the stop alarm button? It's really easy to mix up. They're so small and close together, you really have to look at them to figure out which one is which. Well, that problem is mitigated if you use your phone in standby overnight. When your alarm goes off, this is what you will see instead. And all your notifications get a similar sort of treatment. When a notification comes in, you'll see the icon pop up, and then it'll fill in the text to the side. It's a lot like the animation that comes up on the Apple Watch, except of course it's really big on your iPhone screen. So if you do your work on a computer during the day, especially if it's on a PC, this will be a really great and easy way to field your notifications as they come in. So that is how you can use standby. If you learned something from this video, be sure to like and subscribe. You can also check out other videos I've done on new iOS 17 features. I'm Deeker from Jones with Cult of Mac.